Now we will begin our coverage of the serial communications peripherals on the PIC-24F family. We will start with the UARTs. The PIC-24FJ128GA family we are basing our discussion on includes two independent UART channels. The Universal Asynchronous Receiver Transmitter, or UART, has been a standard feature on many microchip products for many years. It supports both RS-232 and RS-485 protocols. For duplex, 8 or 9-bit data is supported. Even, odd, and no parity options are supported. One or two stop bits can be used. The module also supports hardware flow control options for operations where one or both of the devices are potentially busy. A modem is one example of the type of operation that can benefit from the hardware flow control. Baud rates can be generated from 15 BPS to 1 megabps. The device includes four deep receive and transmit buffers. The receive and transmit buffers reduce the load on the CPU by reducing the number of times the CPU has to service interrupts from the peripheral. Some additional features that have been added to the peripheral are support for the IRDA protocol and LIN. The UART modules used for the PIC24F family include the encoder and decoder required to implement IRDA. It also includes the 16x baud clock output for IRDA support. The UART module also supports automatic baud rate generation, allowing full support for the LIN protocol. The second serial peripheral we will discuss is the I2C interface. The PIC24FJ128GA family contains two dedicated I2C modules. The I2C module in the PIC24F includes independent master and slave logic. The I2C also supports 7 and 10 bit addressing modes. The module supports general call address as defined by the I2C specification. Clock stretching is supported as a handshake mechanism between slave device and master. Multi master operation is supported. This allows the device to detect a bus collision and arbitrate accordingly. And the device meets both 100 kilohertz and the 400 kilohertz bus specifications. FSCL can go as high as 1 megahertz. Address masking is also available to allow the device to monitor more than one address. The address masking function is described in more detail on the next slide. Address masking allows a single I2C module to monitor more than one address on the bus. This allows one device to respond with multiple pieces of information. For example, in one system, one I2C device may act as a temperature sensor. A second monitors the system voltage, and a third acts as the real-time clock. In the second phase of the system design, one device, our PIC24F for example, could act as a source for all three pieces of data. By setting the correct bits in the slave mode address mask register and enabling the address mask, one I2C module is able to respond to multiple requests for data. The bits that are set in the mask register will become don't care when the address is compared to the expected address. In the example shown here, the bits corresponding to address bits A1, A2, and A4 are set. This will cause the device to acknowledge any addresses when A3, A5, A6, and A7 match the data in the I2C address register. This will allow one device to respond to eight different addresses. With the I2C completed, we can now move on to the last peripheral to be covered today. The PIC24FJ128GA devices include two independent SPI channels. Like the I2C, SPI is used for communications with a number of different peripherals. We will explore the features of the SPI and its uses in the next slide. The SPI module in the PIC24F family of microcontrollers can be configured to operate with two, three, or four wire connections. In the two wire mode, the device is configured to receive data in from an external device, like a sensor, using only the clock, SCK, and the SDI, or data in pins. In the three wire mode, the device is configured with SCK, SDO, or serial data out, and SDI. In the four wire configuration, the device operates with an SSX, or slave select line. Active low slave select line also operates as a synchronization pulse I.O. for operation in a system that utilizes a continuous clock. 
The SPI module supports four framing modes based around the synchronization pulse. The framing modes are very useful in systems involving audio data. Serial clock rates of up to 10 megabits per second are supported by the SPI peripheral. As mentioned earlier, the SPI port can be used to communicate with a number of different external peripherals. Some examples include E squared PROMs, shift registers, display drivers, and A to D converters. This concludes our coverage of the PIC24F peripherals. Before we leave this page, please remember that this peripheral, like all in this presentation, can be configured using VDI.